After 50 hours of playing Core Keeper, I learned a lot of things that would have made the game much easier had I known them from the start. With that in mind, I want to share with you the 12 things I wish I knew when I started playing Core Keeper. Before we begin, make sure to hit the subscribe button below so you never miss any future Core Keeper videos. Let's get started. The first thing I wish I knew when I started playing Core Keeper is you actually don't need a pickaxe to mine. In fact, you can either use your fist or your torch. Now, I prefer using the torch just because it allows me to have a light source. So as I'm breaking this, and let me take off of this right here. So as a, if you have no torch, it's going to be pretty dark, right? So you can't really see what's going on over here. If you have the torch in your hand, you can see. However, if you're mining with a pickaxe when you're first starting out, you're not going to be able to see anything. So what you're going to have to do is place torches down everywhere. You're going to end up spending a lot of torches doing that. So instead, what I do, and while this is going to take a little bit longer than using a pickaxe, is I prefer to just use the torch for mining. Now, do be mindful. This character I have here is a higher level, so my mining skill is higher. It's going to take you a couple hits if you're actually mining with a new character. But mining with a torch is going to save you resources. It's also going to allow you to see what you're doing and get where you're going without having to, like I said, burn a lot of resources or laying a bunch of torches behind you. Second on the list of things I wish I knew when I first started playing were you can leave these glow tulips here on the ground as a natural light source. So if I put this away, you're going to see that we have a natural light source here. Take this away here and we're going to be able to see. Glow tulips can be harvested. I would recommend harvesting some of them. That way you can take them back to your base and plant them so you can get seeds and make more of them. However, as I have now, since I have a decent amount of them, I just leave the ones that I find naturally occurring in the world where they are because that way I don't have to. They provide a light source so I can see what's going on around them. You can actually even plant them out here if you want to, but... That's a tip that I wish I knew is just leaving them there instead of digging them up so that I could see where they are, see, see around where they are and see areas that I might not otherwise be able to see. Like, for example, as I'm here, I can see that this area is lit up and there's slimes over here. The third thing I wish I knew when I started playing Core Caver was you can actually use the glow tulips to light up your base. So while you can use these torches here, the decorative torches or the regular torches that you can place down, they kind of the regular torches kind of look like eh. these look like they're these look OK, but you can actually put down all of these. You can put the glow tulips in the pot. So basically, all you have to do is place down the pot, walk up to it and press E and you can just drag a glow tulip or a left click, left shift and right and left, hold shift and click and it'll put the tulip in there and it'll light it up and it just makes your base look a lot nicer. Specifically, I hear like in my garden area, this it looks a lot nicer here having these out here instead of having just torches all over the place. Next thing I wish I knew when I first started playing Core Keeper was you can actually make an infinite wood supply. So when you first start out, you're going to find wood around the core. But if you once you farm all that out, it's not going to come back. However, if you, you can actually get seeds from that. So you can get the root seeds, which we have right here. And you can actually plant these and make your own wood farm. So what we're going to do is we're going to hoe the ground right here. We're going to place the seed right here. And we're just going to water it. And then we'll come back later. And what you'll see is this thing will have grown out. So we'll check this out later just to see how much wood has grown over the course of me recording this video in just a couple for just a couple of minutes. Next up on our list of things I wish you knew when I first started playing Core Gaber was you can actually dig up buried treasure. So right here, you're going to see this little X. Let's put a torch down so it's actually easier to see. If you see a spot like this on the ground, this is actually a place you can dig. You can dig any tile, uh, any ground tile here. So like I can dig up any of these tiles and move them around. However, this one's going to ha possibly have something underneath. What's going to have something underneath it. So let's dig it up with our shovel. And as you can see, we got a, a seed from it. So sometimes you get a seed. Sometimes you get a relic that you can actually sell. Sometimes you find other things. So... Anytime you see an X on the ground, make sure you have a shovel. You can always craft a wooden shovel if you don't have one with you. But that's super useful so that you can just get free resources and possibly get something rare. Going along lines with the shovel, the next thing I wish I knew when I first started playing Core Keeper is you don't have to build bridges. You can build bridges across chasms and waterways, but you can also just use your shovel to dig up blocks. So let's put down our torch right here. We're going to dig up some of these blocks right here, and we're just going to build a land bridge across this waterway. Now, this is super useful if you come across a place where you just can't cross and you don't have the resources to build a bridge. You can just dig up the ground here, put it in our inventory. Where'd it go? It went here. I'm going to put this up here, and then we're going to use this to cross this water over here. So let's put a torch down so you can see. Now, of course, you can usually find your way across places, but sometimes you can't. So we'll just build this across here, see how far it goes. And basically, we're all the way across there. All we need to do is get one more, and we'll be good to go. And we've built ourselves all the way across it. So definitely use that to your advantage just in case you come across a place like let's say, for example, you've you found a place where you you see ore or something like let's say I was over here and I saw this ore over here and I couldn't get here. All you have to do is dig up a little bit of ground, move it over there, and now you got a way across there in, in case there's a way for you to not easily be able to get across there. The third tip for using the shovel and the thing I wish I knew when I first started out was you can actually dig up this ground slime here. So if I dig this up, what this will do is if I dig all of this up, it should prevent the slimes from spawning here. You can also do this with the ground that spawns in the larva, which you'll run into later on. And what you can do with this is it actually serves two purposes. One, you can stop them from spawning in in that area. 
and two, you can actually use them to make mob farms. So for example, I place these down here. I place down the ground slime in here that I dug up, put it in here, and now slime spawning here. These are the one this is the ground that spawns larva. I put it in here and now I can farm the larva. So not only can I prevent them from spawning places I don't want them to, I can actually make them spawn where I want them to, so I can harvest the resources from them. Next up on our list of things I wish you knew when I started playing Core Caver is don't trash excess walls that you've harvested. For example, you're gonna be doing a lot of mining. And I'll show you my map right here. I've done quite a bit of mining. This took about 45 hours to do all this. In my mining expeditions, I ended up coming across tons and tons or gathering tons and tons of walls. So let's see if they're in here. Yeah, so I have a full stack of dirt, clay, two for stone. I got a bunch of wood and stuff here. And what I was doing was originally I was just trashing all this stuff. But what I realized was that's not the smartest thing to do because you can either lay it laying on the ground or you can just pick it up and trash it. So if you have stuff in your inventory, you can just drop it over here, hit the trash bin, and it disappears. Now, while that can be useful for cleaning out your inventory, a better use for it is actually to bring it back to your base or have a table around. And what you can do is instead of wasting it, you can actually turn it into walls that you can then recycle or use. So let's say, for example, I was building a base. I could use it to build these. If I already built this, like this base is built out of stone, so I don't care about wood walls anymore. Instead of just trashing the dirt and the wood that I found, I can just sit here and craft these. And as you craft them, you'll end up getting a chance. You'll level up your crafting skill, which will then eventually allow you to level up your skill. So your crafting skill right here, a lot of this was from me just sitting here and crafting items and just destroying them. So after I've destroyed all these walls, I drop them in here because I don't want them. But I've now used these resources to help level up my crafting skill and improve my ability to craft. Now I kind of felt silly about this next tip after playing the game for a decent amount of time, but most of the crops you can find can be planted in dirt. The one that cannot is the carrick here. The carrick must be planted in stone ground. Now, what I didn't realize was you actually have to hoe the ground, which I don't understand. I don't know why I didn't think about this, but putting down the dirt and hoeing it made perfect sense to me. Putting down the stone and hoeing it didn't make sense because when you find the carrots, they're kind of just sitting out in the stone ground, out in the stone biome. And I thought I could just place them, but it wouldn't let me place them. So what I eventually accidentally found out while I was putting down, while I was planting other crops was you can actually hoe the stone ground, plant the carrots, water them, and they'll grow. So if you're for some reason like me and you just don't, and you have a little brain fart and don't think about it. If you're trying to plant carrot seeds, make sure you have stone ground and then you hoe it and then you can plant the carrots so you can grow them yourself instead of having to go find them in the stone biome. Second tip involving farming is you can actually use the water wells from the stone biome, which is right here. You can use these in your own farm instead of having to go out and get water yourself. So I could go down here and fill my watering can up with this water source or have a watering source in my farm and water these with. However, I would I decided to use the watering well here for two reasons. Number one, it's a quicker watering source, and number two, I just think it makes the farm look better. So having the watering well in the center of the farm allows me to water my plants while also making my farm just look a little bit nicer than if I just had a little pit of water here or if I just had water over here. And then the final tip involving farming and the 11th tip on the things I wish I knew before I started playing Core Keeper was save all your seeds. So when you farm these crops, more likely than not, you're only going to get one seed from them. I know in a lot of crafting or survival games where you have farming, when you dig up a crop, you'll end up getting more seeds than you've planted. So for example, each plant might give you one or two, might give you two, three, four seeds, depending on the game you're playing. In Core Keeper, you normally only get one seed. There's a small chance that you can get more than one seed. And I believe there's a skill you can level up that gives you a better chance of getting more than one seed. So what I ended up doing originally was I was just throwing away all the seeds I had because I was like, I don't need all these seeds. I have plenty of seeds and I don't want to waste my inventory space because you start out with limited inventory space when you start out before you start upgrading it by getting uh, extra backpacks and stuff like that. Instead, what I do now is any seeds that I find, and you can see I have a ton of seeds here. Had I not done that, I would not have been able to plant all these crops. So you don't need a massive farm like this, especially if you're playing by yourself. I just did this because I wanted it to look nice. Plus, I pretty much have an unlimited food source now, but I was only able to do this by not throwing away all the seeds I found along the way. And now I have all these seeds here. So for example, if I want to go set up a base somewhere else away from the core, maybe in a different biome, I have all these seeds I can take with me and grow crops over there. I can set up multiple bases and I have plenty of seeds to do that. And then the 12th and final thing I wish I knew when I started playing Core Caver was there are actually set bonuses in the game. Now, many games have this where if you have a full set of something, you get bonuses. For example, there's armor sets in Core Caver that give you a set bonus. There is also, however, jewelry you can find so you can find jewelry you can also craft some of this jewelry and i think you can actually buy some from the npcs as well now what i didn't realize when i first started playing was i just threw on whatever jewelry i had however eventually i ended up finding sets so for example i have the ring of stone and the ring of rock these are most likely going to be two of the pieces of jewelry or the two of the rings you're going to find pretty early on because you get them normally from mining you can also get jewelry from enemy drops from chests and stuff like that so as you're playing you'll end up getting a decent amount of these they're not super rare but these two actually provide a set bonus so if i hover over this one 
Having both of these gives me plus 49 mining damage. So if I'm wearing both of these when I'm mining, I'll be able to do plus 49 mining damage, which means I can break the, the things I'm bra mining faster. I don't have to use a higher level pickaxe. I can use a lower level pickaxe. So instead of having to use an iron pickaxe to harvest everything, I could actually use a lower level one to possibly be able to break stuff, although it does still help to use the best things. And it just makes things easier. There are other set bonuses where there's one that has a necklace that goes with a ring that gives you a different bonus. And like I said, there's armor bonuses. So when you're finding jewelry, when you're finding anything that you find in the game, armor, when you're crafting and stuff like that, just look for set bonuses so it can augment your play and make your life a little bit easier. Now, before we wrap it up, I did want to show you that the seed that I planted for the wood has started to grow. Now, it's only been a couple minutes, so it hasn't grown that long, that much. However, if I come back and like an actually, you can just see it just popped right there. As long as you leave this little block right here that you've planted has the leaves on it, this thing will start sprouting out in all different directions. So you've like, obviously you've seen the wood that you farm in the game. It sprouts out in different directions. If you plant this in an open area like this of dirt and have only dirt around it, this thing will just start spreading in all directions and you'll end up having an unlimited supply of wood. So just make sure you don't break this block. Although if you break this one, it will give you a seed so you can replace it. But as long as you leave this here, this thing will just start growing in all directions and give you infinite wood. You can plant down multiple root seeds and do the same thing. So if you're ever running out of wood, just make sure you do that and you'll you should never run out of wood after that so those are the 12 things i wish i knew when i started playing core keeper let me know in the comments down below which one you found most helpful if you did find this video helpful make sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing for more core keeper videos just like this thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video